Who's in here? Louise? Louise isn't here. Who are you? I'm her husband. You have a very interesting library, Mr. Hagen. I've just been looking at one of your books. What do you mean by breaking into my apartment? Ripping up the furniture? What do you mean by that? Isn't it obvious? A plain case of burglary. You're not a thief. No. But you are. You tried to steal my wife. <laughs> That's not true. Well, how do you think I got in here, huh? With the key that you gave her. Did you think I didn't know about you two meeting here? I realized it all along. Why did you come here? Can't you guess? You haven't got a very good imagination, have you? Now, here we are, just you and I, alone in the middle of the night. The place is completely soundproof. And look, I'm wearing gloves. Now, listen, Logan. The stage is all set. It will appear as though burglars broke into your apartment and you were killed defending yourself. It's all a mistake, I swear it. Now, listen to me, Logan. Don't shoot! Don't! Don't shoot! Oh, no, I wouldn't think of shooting you. Besides, a gun can be traced. Anyway, I have a much better weapon. Right here on your wall. No, Logan, no! Operator! Operator. She won't answer you. You see? I thought of everything. Punishment. That, in a nutshell, is our story for tonight. Except that instead of a neurotic student and his nemesis, our play is about a beautiful wife with an intemperate taste in men and her discerning husband, whose reservation will stop at nothing, not even murder. This good man, however, is not an ordinary killer. He has flair, imagination, a good imagination. That's the name of our play. Our players are Patricia Barry, Ed Nelson, and Edward Andrews, who is the injured bookworm. Join us now as we watch this bookworm turn to murder. <laughs>
Frank, you're back. <laughs> Obviously. Surprised to see me. Well, I didn't expect you until this evening. Well, I took an earlier plane. Three days of a book dealer's convention in Philadelphia was all I could stand. Oh, I've missed you, Louise. You can't imagine how dead it is down there. Frank, please, don't use that word. What's the matter? I've just come from a funeral. Funeral? Who died? Randy Hagen. Randy Hagen? Do I know him, dear? But of course. We met him months ago at Edna's party, don't you remember? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Good-looking young man with a mustache. Sort of a minor league d'Artagnan. Who? D'Artagnan. That's a character in The Three Musketeers. I don't suppose you read it, though. No. Oh, a drink? Make me one, too, will you, dear? Yes, I remember now. Randy Hagen. <laughs> Didn't he invite you to go for a ride in his private plane? Uh-huh. As I recall, he was quite smitten with your charms. Tell me, did you ever accept his... Of course his... not. I never saw him again. But you went to his funeral. Well, Edna called. She, she wanted me to go with her. She didn't want to go alone. You understand? Oh, of course. What did uh, he die of, darling? I, I say, what did Randy Hagen die of? <gasps> oh, oh <dear>. darling, <laughs> please be careful. <laughs> Here, let me get a cloth. Sorry. I... Well, well, are you nervous about something? No, no. I'm just a little clumsy. <laughs> That's strange, isn't it? How clumsy we can be when we least intend to. Well, cheers. You didn't answer my question yet, darling. What did Randy Hagen die of? Oh, I remember now. It was in all the Philadelphia papers. Some burglars broke into his place and <laughs> killed him with a battle axe right in his own bedroom. Stop <laughs> it! Must you talk about such things? It's horrible. Seems like an odd way for a man like that to die. He's the type you'd expect would be shot by a jealous husband. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, darling. I, I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> we'll change the subject. Oh, that reminds me. I want to ask you about something. Where did you get that? I found it the other day on top of your vanity before I left. Before you left? Doesn't fit any of our doors. What's it for, darling? Oh, well, I, I've never seen it before. Maybe it belongs to the maid. Well, you could ask her tomorrow. Here, take it. And then if it's not hers, why, you can keep it as a, a souvenir. Going, darling. Oh, uh, well, there's something I, uh, oh, I, I forgot. Come on, sis, pull yourself together. It can't be that bad. Did it, Arnold? He killed Randy. Frank? That bookworm? Oh, he wouldn't hurt a flea. You should have seen his face when he gave me the key. That's not evidence enough to convict a man of murder. But don't you understand? He must have sneaked out of the hotel in Philadelphia, flown down here, killed Randy, and then went back again. Well, if you're so sure, why don't you go to the police? 
Well, do you think it was that easy for me to come to you, my very own brother, and tell you about Randy? Well, if I go to the police, well, it'll all be out. Everyone will know. And that's what you're afraid of. I'd do it in one minute if I was sure Frank would be punished. But first, I've got to have the proof. A private investigation, eh? Arnold, you're the only one in the whole world that can help me. Isn't there something we can do? I have a friend. Joe Thorpe. He's a licensed investigator and a good man. Let me get in touch with him. Oh, do you suppose that he could really now, do don't something? don't worry. You run along home, sis. You'll be hearing from me very soon. Well, thank you, Arnold. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you. You say he's coming back, eh? That's right, Mr. Logan. He insists upon doing business with you personally. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? After all, a lot of our customers insist on special attention. That's just it, Mr. Logan. He didn't seem like a customer to me. There was something offbeat. I can't quite put my finger on it. <laughs> Don't let it bother you, Celia. If he comes back, I'll handle him. Meanwhile, you better go put your finger on some lunch. It's after one. Oh, thanks. Mr. Logan. I think this is him coming in now. That's all right. You go on ahead. Excuse me. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, there is. Do you have a book called The Insider? Oh, that would be O.P. O.P.? Out of print. I uh, don't have a copy on hand. I could probably locate one for you. See, The Insider and Others. That's by J.P. Morgenstern, Klein Press, 1939. That's rather a rare item. Yes, I can't find it anywhere in town. Oh, uh, you collect Morgenstern, eh? That's right. <laughs> then you'll probably agree that The Insiders is the best novel he ever wrote. Oh, no doubt about that. Oh, I have a doubt. What do you mean? The Insiders is not a novel. It's a short story. <laughs> yeah, sure. Slipped my mind. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's just a fantasy. Like you're pretending to be a customer. What is your business here? Private investigator. Private investigator. I was going to tell you anyway as soon as I sized you up. Maybe we can deal. Who sent you here? That doesn't matter, Mr. Logan. It's what I found out. I don't know what you're talking about. No. What about Philadelphia last Monday night? Flight 27 into town, flight 19 back there again. Same evening, right after Randy Hagen was killed. Are you out of your mind? No. But you are if you think that phony name on the passenger list will protect you. A couple of flight hostesses to identify you in case anybody should ask them. Who put you up to this? You must know it was Arnold Chase, your brother in law. Good friend of mine. Then you've talked to him? No, not yet. I figured it'd be better business to talk to you first. I can always tell him I couldn't get any leads. How much do you want? 10,000. Ten thousand. Now, wait a minute. You do a good business here. I'm not about to wait very long. All right. How soon? Tomorrow night. Your brother-in-law has a fishing cabin out at the lake. I'm supposed to go up there over the weekend and make my report. See, he knows I've been to Philadelphia, so I can't stall him. Either I tell him tomorrow night or I don't. It's up to you. It'll take me all day tomorrow to get that much cash together. How can I see you? Got that figured, too. Why don't you run out of the cabin yourself? It's only an hour's drive from town. Let's make it for 8 o'clock. But Arnold will be there. No, he won't. 
He's tied up until nine. I know he gave me the key. I don't know. It sounds too risky. Safest thing in the world. Nobody out at the lake this time of the year. Send your wife out for the evening, make some excuse. We're in business. I still say it sounds risky. Would you rather take your chances with the hangman? Joe? Joe, are you there? What are you doing here? Waiting for you. Oh, come, 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 don't look so startled. It's all right. Joe invited me. Joe? Where is he? I saw his car. Oh, he's out back. He'll be here in a minute. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. I'll, I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> here. Let me pour you a drink. There we are. Now go ahead. Go, go ahead, drink it, drink it, drink it. It's cold <laughs> night. <laughs> That's why Joe brought it. You and he know each other? Well, of course. <laughs> We're like Jean Valjean and Javert. I'm the hunted, he's the hunter. At least we were. Go, go, go ahead, drink up, drink up. I'll explain it to you. Well, well, you see, it's quite simple. Joe came to me and told me that you had hired him. He double-crossed you, Arnold. Are you crazy? No, no, and neither was he. He offered to keep his mouth shut for $10,000. I just gave it to him. Ten? And he ran away with the money? Oh, no, 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 he, he's still here. Want to talk to him? He's waiting for you in the boat. Joe! Arnold's here! You killed him? Nonsense. Just a little touch of something I put in his drink. You see, after I gave him the money, he wanted to celebrate. So I... Uh-oh, that reminds me. the money. He won't be needing this now. You see, I did tell you the truth. I only lied about one thing. I brought the bottle, not Joe. The bottle? You, you gave me a drink. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, it should be taking effect about now. How do you feel, Arnold? I can't see. But you can hear me, can't you? Look. Oops, oops, oops. Don't exert yourself. come up here looking for fish, didn't you? Well, in just a little while, you're going to see a lot of them. Hello? Oh, Louise. 
How's the party? Hmm? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm fine. I've been home all evening. What? Oh, reading. Just reading. I tell you, there is nothing like a real fireplace to give a place that homey touch. Darling, it is going to be very pleasant for us here this summer. But we're so far away from town. I mean, nobody lives out here for miles. But that's just what you need. Rest and quiet. Remember what the doctor told you. Oh, well, but I'm all right now. I mean, it was just the shock just after the accident. Up, up, da, 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 da. Now, we promise not to talk about that anymore, remember? Besides, yes. I want you to just take it easy this summer. That's why I bought this place. You can work in the garden, get, get lots of fresh air and sunshine. The thing I don't like is sleeping out here all alone at night. That's nothing to worry about. Besides, you said yourself, there's nobody around for miles. <laughs> and, and, and I'll be coming up every weekend. Celia can run that shop herself on Saturdays. But, Frank, if I only had a car of my own, so uh, we, 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 We'll think about that later. In a month or so, when you're feeling more... fit. Oh, besides, you've got plenty of entertainment here. <laughs> Look at all these books. I'm no reader. That's right, you're not. Pity. One can learn so much from the right books. Miss Logan? Yes. I'm George Parker from over at Dalton. The uh, fellow over there at the real estate office said you folks just moved in last week. Last week? Seems more like last year. Yeah, I guess so. With all this rain and everything. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Won't you come in? Oh, well, thank you. It's really uh, coming Ooh. down up there. I uh, just stopped by figuring you might have some work for me. Work? Yeah, I'm a, a jack of all trades around here. It's sort of odd jobs and repair men. Uh, the folks used to own this place wanted me to fix their chimney. I never got around to it, and I, I thought maybe you might want me to look at it. Oh, well, I guess you better talk to my husband about that. Oh. Oh, he's not here? No, no, he only comes down on weekends. I see. Well, uh, I can uh, drop by then. See, it's awful chilly in here. How is it you don't have a fire going? I'm afraid I don't know how to build one properly. <laughs> I'm just not used to roughing it. Yeah, well, listen, uh... Why don't you let me get it going for you? And it won't take a second. And uh, this thing can be a little tricky if you, uh, if you don't know what you're doing with it. Very kind of you. Well, that's, that's all right. Oh, wait a minute. Here. Here are some matches. Oh, thanks. See, there's really uh, nothing to it. All you got to do is make sure it gets going where there's a, a good draft. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's all right. Listen, if there's uh, anything else I can do around here, you know, be a help or anything, you just uh, let me know. Huh? Oh, I'm just terrified of thunder. 
Yeah, well, you don't have to be scared. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Are you? up here every Friday night, remember? <sighs> Say, uh, what does he do anyway? For a living, I mean. He's a book dealer. Oh, books, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah, I noticed there was a lot of books around the place. I guess you do a lot of reading, eh? No. Uh -huh. Do you? <laughs> Not me. I guess I'm more what you call a... the action type. George. George, look, I, I want you to understand. I mean, well, just because of what's happened between oh, I us. I do, I do, baby. No, but I mean, you mustn't oh. think that I'm just one of those cheap women. No, no, you're one of the classiest specimens I ever met. Just think we're gonna have this whole summer together, just you and me. Hello, darling. <laughs> Dirty weather, isn't it? Sure is. I was just trying to get the fire going right. Oh, Frank, uh, this is George Parker. Well, he's the local repairman. He just dropped in. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Hogan. I, uh, say, you got a faulty fireplace here. It's a chimney. I was just stopped by to see if I could fix it. I, I was wondering. I saw your truck outside. R rather late to repair things now, don't you think? Oh, well, not tonight. I, I met uh, sometime later on this week. Yeah, perhaps. Well, I guess I'll just, uh, cut out. Oh, but, uh, please. Oh, thanks. We must have... Just miss each other on the road, eh? Yeah, that's right. Well, I've just been here about five minutes. Yes, I see. Well, uh, I'm gonna run along. Listen, it sure is swell having some nice neighbors here again. Bye. 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 Frank, darling, really, I'm so sorry. I, I mean, he just barged in. There was nothing I could do. Well, of course. But the next time he comes, we'll have to be prepared to offer him a little hospitality. Honestly, chances you've taken coming here all these weeks. It's got to stop. Come on, you want it to stop. Why then, why won't you come away with me? I told you why. You haven't any money. Neither have I. Husband of yours is kind of stingy, huh? He keeps everything to himself, just like his precious books. Well, you've seen the way he treats me. Yeah. I might just as well be just another book in his library. Something to glance at now and then. Till I get old and molder away. I wish he were dead. Don't say that. Why? Well, you you got a thing about thunderstorms. I I got a thing about dead people. So when I hear about him, it kind of gets me. I'm sorry, George. Sorry, right. it's just one of those things. Darling, what are we going to do? Well. Don't worry about it now. Something will turn up. Meanwhile, you forget about your husband. Besides, he's a kind that never catches on. He's always got his nose stuck in a book somewhere.
Down here, George. I'm down in the basement, all ready to go. Oh, afternoon, Mr. Logan. Hello, George. You all alone? Yeah, that's right. It's kind of hot today. Where's Miss Logan? I sent her to Dalton with the car. She's picking up the check at the real estate office. <sighs> Sorry to hear about you folks leaving. It's uh, kind of sudden, isn't it? Oh, I like to move quickly once I make up my mind, George. Well, you're going to be missed, Mr. Logan. Oh, I don't think so, George. After all, we never saw anybody around the place all summer except you. You see, that's the idea. I want to spend more time with my wife. You can uh, understand that, can't you, George? Why, oh, sure. Actually, you saw more of her this summer than I did. So when I uh, heard about the offer on the house, I closed the deal. Yep, we're all set, ready to move out first thing in the morning. Ms. Logan said you're planning some kind of a trip. Huh? Do you talk to her, George? Well, uh, last night I uh, dropped in here for a second. Uh, uh, she says you sold a bookstore, huh? Yeah, that's right. All free and clear, ready to travel. Where are you planning on going? It's a surprise, George. I haven't even told Louise. <laughs> Main thing is, though, that we're going to be together. I think a wife's place is with her husband. D don't you th think so? Oh, yeah. yeah. Say, you mix this stuff up pretty good. How do you think you're so handy, Mr. Logan? <laughs> I can do anything once I set my mind to it, George. Anything. Hey, uh, is this the hole here you want me to plug up? Uh, yeah, yeah. That uh, extends clear back under the shed. Well, you want me to crawl in there and take oh, a look? No, 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 don't bother, George. I just want to cement it up before the new owners get here. That's why I phoned you and asked you to come down. Oh, I'll keep the mice on it. Huh? And the rats. Well, there's no rats around here, Mr. Logan. Ah, oh, you're wrong there, George. There are rats everywhere. Oh, dear, they... They'll sneak in when you're not looking. First thing you know, they'll ruin a man's home for him. And they're cunning, too, George. Yeah, they try to cover up their tracks. But a smart man knows when they're around, and he gets rid of them. You think this cement will do the job? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. That's something new on the market. You know, that'll get hard in less than half an hour. Now, if you'll just give me a hand here, George, we'll uh, carry this over to the wall, and you can get to work. Look at, well, you are almost finished, huh? Yeah, this stuff does a swell job. It's almost hard already. <laughs> I'm just going to smooth off this little spot in here. Oh, no, no, no. Don't bother, George. Don't bother. Hey, you look hot. How about a beer? Well, you got any? Surest thing you know. <laughs> <laughs> got to get rid of it all anyway. Yeah. I hope this beer is cold enough. I shut the freezer off last night. Oops. Oh, man. Huh? Hmm. Huh? That's just right. <laughs> hey, aren't you going to have any? No, I never drink around firearms. Where did they come from? Who? Oh, oh I've, I've had this for years, George. I was going to build a target range down here in the basement. Ah, it's too late for that now. Listen, how is it a fellow like you is interested in guns? George... Every time I look at this gun, I think of a thousand stories. One for every bullet it's ever fired. Whoops. <laughs> stories of violence and danger, guilt and justice. But I did. I'm talking too much. Hey, George, how about another beer, huh? Okay. Here we are. Hey. Stuff really goes swell when you've been working on sure. a hot day. You bet your life it does. You kind of hits me up. Oh, well, it's the last day. May as well celebrate, huh? Got to get rid of it all anyway. Let's go look at your work, huh? All right. That wall is really solid now, huh? <laughs> What's that noise? I don't hear anything. Mice. Back behind there. Oh, maybe it's those rats you tell me about. Oh, no, I rather think this was a mouse, George. The squeaking was so shrill. Can't you hear it? No? Oh, well, it doesn't matter anyway. This job is perfectly airtight, isn't it? 
Sure. Well, whatever is sealed up back there will suffocate in just a few moments. You know, you must be deaf to the high notes, George. I, I could hear that sound all the time you were cementing up the wall. Well, that's a nice job, George. That's your last job, huh? <laughs> Come on, let's have a beer and we'll settle up, eh? Oh, listen, maybe I, uh, maybe I better not. I got some things to do. Oh, with the come dog, on, come on. I'll join you, George. And we will have a toast. George, we'll drink a little toast to freedom. Freedom? Yeah. Oh, there's no use in keeping any secrets from you, George. After all, in a way, you're like one of the family, huh? So you may as well know. Know what? Louise and I have separated. Separated? Mm. Hey, can't you hear that noise now? Now, listen, what do you mean, separated? I mean, you have a fight or something? Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. Um, it was rather sudden. At least I don't think she expected it. Well, she's not over at Dalton, then? No, I'm afraid not, George. Well, she, uh, she didn't go away, I mean, already today. Yes, you might say something like that. Look, uh, what are you driving at? I mean, what's the idea Shh. of bringing... Are you sure you don't hear that, George? No, 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 what's it to hear? I just thought she might be trying to say goodbye to you. What? Oh, you're kidding. Look, you, you better be kidding, Mr. You Lowe. stay right where you are. This gun is loaded, and I assure you I'm not afraid to use it. I got rid of a mouse. I, I wouldn't hesitate to kill a rat. No, you're, you're lying. You gotta be lying. You, you didn't kill her. Oh, no, that's right, George. I didn't kill her. She was perfectly alive when I gagged her, tied her up, and put her in that hole and waited for you to come. We, we not. That's right, George. You killed her, George. You killed her by sealing her up behind that wall, and she could hear you. She knew it, George. No. No. Do it, George. That wall is solid now. There can't be any air left. She's gone. She's gone. No, you, you're out of your mind. No wonder she hated you. We're scared of you. Uh, no human being could think of anything like this. <laughs> Couldn't they, George? Don't you ever read any books? You ever hear of Edgar Allan Poe? The Black Cat? The cask of Amontillado? <laughs> oh, I, I forgot. You and Louise despise reading, don't you? Hmm? You're proud because you take what you want from life and you laugh at bookworms like me, huh? <laughs> well, it is my turn to laugh now, George. You'll, you'll never get away with it. I'll tell the sheriff. I'll get the sheriff. Oh, no, you won't. Because I'll tell him that you're an accessory, that we were in it together. We did it for the insurance. I'll tell the sheriff that you walled her up in there alive, George, while she tried to scream and she knew you were killing her. Tell the lady goodbye, George, while she takes her last breath. She'll die quick now. She'll die quick, and then she'll mummify, and her face will turn to leather, and her mouth will be open in that last silent scream. Can't you hear her, George? Can't you hear her? Listen. She's saying, help me. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Let 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 me out of here. you were packing. All finished. I was just doing a bit of reading. Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> that man had a tremendous imagination. Well, did you accomplish everything in Dalton? Yes. Yeah. But, Frank, something very odd happened to me on the way back. Uh oh? Yes, I was driving along the county trunk road and a state trooper stopped me. Speeding? Of course not. You know, I never do over 50. He wanted to see my driver's license to identify me. I don't understand it. Neither do I. He said I'd saved him a trip all the way out here for nothing. 
I asked him to tell me what it was all about, and he wouldn't. Can you figure out what he meant? Perhaps, but we'd better not talk about it now. I don't want to upset you. Frank, please. Oh, very well. It's getting dark. I'll just draw the curtains. Let me switch on the lamp. Of course. Now, Frank, tell me. Well, we had some excitement here this afternoon, too. George Parker. George? What about George? Well, he was supposed to come and cement up that hole in the basement, remember? Well, he never showed up. That's odd. Yes, isn't it? Anyway, I went right ahead and did the job myself. Want to see it? I'm rather proud of my work. Frank, please tell me what happened. Of course. Come along. Come on. <laughs> Well, about four o'clock this afternoon, Sheriff Taylor called. He was trying to contact you. Me? What on earth for? Well, it's a rather unpleasant situation. Are you sure you want to hear the rest of it? Of course. You can't stop now. Then let's go downstairs. <laughs> I hardly know how to tell you this, but it seems our friend George has suffered some kind of breakdown. George? Rather unexpected, isn't it? Always seemed like such a solid, unimaginative fellow. Didn't you get that impression? Please, Frank, what's wrong? What happened? All right, all right, all right. Well, as I get it, a uh, friend George burst into the sheriff's office with this utterly fantastic story. It seems that he accused me of murdering you and walling you up here in the basement. You're joking. Well, th th that's just what the sheriff said to George at first until he realized the poor fellow had gone actually out of his head. A and then the sheriff asked me where you were. And I told him. You see, that's why the trooper stopped you. He was just checking up. George. Uh... How is he? Complete state of shock, according to the doctor the sheriff called in. But uh, if he doesn't snap out of it, to see do again. Uh... Funny thing about these strong, silent types, isn't it? Did, uh, did George say anything else? No. What else was there to say? Well, wh where did he ever get the idea that you would try to kill me? I haven't got the slightest idea. Just snapped, I guess. Imagination ran away with him. Well, I'm just glad it didn't happen while he was up here with you. Can't tell what he might have done. Now, this might sound far-fetched to you, darling, but do you realize he actually might have tried to make love to you? Ick. Imagine being kissed by a fellow like that. Baby, 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 no, 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 don't cry. No, 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 you'll never see him again. There, that's better. <coughs> Let's go look at my wall. I thought you said you did it yourself. I did. It's not finished. Well, when are you going to do it? I've got it all planned. 
ever since I found out about you two. That's why I sold the place and sent you into town with the money. You expected to come back here, meet George, and run away. I know. I was outside listening while you were talking to him. What are you going to do? Just what George thinks I've already done. Oh, no. No. No, Frank. Uh... Why not? The sheriff knows you're alive tomorrow. He'll just think we've gone away together. My alibi will be set. And the cement will be set, too. No, but Frank, that's not nice. Nobody will look behind that wall. But you'll be there. No. No, Frank. No. Frank! Frank! Oh, no. That's finished. Can you hear me, Louise? I say, it's finished. Now you know, don't you? The difference between George and me. Huh? <laughs> Just a matter of having a good imagination. Logan? Mr. Logan? Sheriff, well, uh, what are you doing here? I just wanted to run out before you left. This is George Parker case. Parker? Yes, my deputy has him upstairs. You mind if we fetch him down? Oh, oh no, no, of course not. Okay, Sam. It's all right, Sam will keep him quieted down. I'm afraid I don't understand. Why did you bring him here? What's the doctor's idea? He thought if Parker actually saw your wife again, maybe he'd snap out of it. Saw my wife? Now? That's right. We just want to have a look at Mrs. Logan now. Where is she? Mm -hmm. 